Let us go. And you'll see, Sienna, you see that it looks like a little old, frozen, falling apart village. It isn't like that. A city with 50,000 people in the 13th, 14th century was a metropolis. And Siena had 50,000 people. And only now we are again as many as in those days. So let us say that London was even smaller than Siena in those days. Paris and Florence were as big as Siena. This is just to give you an idea of why it is worth of so coming to Siena. See all the little houses built one close to the other and on the top of the hills. Now we mustn't forget that in the 13th, 14th century, people had anything to do but fighting against each other. So it really looked like they were always fighting. When Siena was not busy against Florence, the rich families inside kept fighting against each other. They built their residences like fortresses and so on. So you see, they had, the city was always surrounded by walls and the walls were built for affairs. So they tried to occupy all the space that they could inside the walls. And that is why they built the houses like that. Besides the fact that they are without foundation, so they are really holding each other to, to, to another one, to one house to another. Then we see the importance of the cathedral and the church. The cathedral is in marble. Well, it is famous that Tuscany always had a lot of marble, and even the most famous and the best and the most expensive, the Carrara marble. But anyhow, they used it only for the most important building. And in this case, there you are. It was the cathedral. And then you see there the tower of the city hall that we're going to see. So now we go, we have this wonderful shortcut. Uh, it is very picturesque. The main street is on the other side, so you won't see any shop here. We go straight to the cathedral. Siena is the largest Tuscan hill town, so it's filled with interesting little neighborhoods and artistic treasures, and yet it's small enough to be quaint and quiet and very peaceful and largely automobile free. This is one of the most photographed alleys. You see, Siena is lit at night only by lanterns. You see that there is very little traffic. In fact, Siena has a big pedestrian area. Even bicycles are not allowed in Siena. Of course, some cars must be allowed. Delivery cars, police cars, or things like this, but at this time of the day, it is really wonderful. Getting a chance to walk through these quiet little back lanes is one of the most delightful experiences on any trip to Europe, along with shopping and visiting the great artworks and the beautiful cathedrals, just taking a stroll. And it always helps to have a guide who knows the way. In this case, she's leading us to the great cathedral of Siena. This is the back of it. It wasn't even finished. Now we continue and we see the facade and then we go into the cathedral, all right? The cathedral is truly a remarkable structure with many important artworks and surprises inside and we are going to bring you on a detailed visit with our local guide. Now we've got a perfect view of the facade. Strangely enough, somehow we can compare Siena with Paris because Siena is at the city of the Gothic in Italy. Now this is rather strange. The Gothic style is the one with the pointed arches. You will find pointed arches all over Paris and so on. The Gothic style originated in Paris. It was exported all over Europe. It was never accepted 100% in Italy. We don't find a lot of Gothic style, but we happen to find a lot of it in Siena. So if you look around, you see pointed arches all over. So Siena is really said the city of the Gothic in Italy. As far as the cathedral is concerned, it took 200 years to build it. It was built in the same period of the one in Paris, the one in Florence, and so on. It is among the richest that we have in Italy because the most famous Italian sculptors have been working here. You've met already Michelangelo and Bernini in Rome, and they've been working also here and so on. What we can observe from this point is this, that this cathedral is in three styles. Romanesque, see the fact the Romanesque style on the lower part, and the Romanesque style originated in Italy. It is Italian style. The Gothic style on the top, and as I said, that came from northern France. And then if you look at the bell tower, and then you will see those inside, you find a lot of stripes. You will see that this cathedral looks a bit like a, like a zebra. It's a beautiful surprise. And that is what we call the Byzantine style. I mean, the idea came from Istanbul. The main street of Siena that we haven't seen, but we're going to walk on part of it. The main street of Siena became about 800 years ago part of the most important road in Europe north-south. All Europe started traveling 
and all Europe started going through Siena in order to go to Rome, St. Peter, you know, all this kind of thing. You go inside, we see the cathedral. <laughs> so this is really, for us, very strange. I mean, we don't expect so many stripes. Stripes that we normally find in Istanbul, in Cairo, in Spain, in Cordoba, and so on. So this is what I said, the Byzantine site. You see anyhow that it really looks like a beautiful zebra. And it is very rich because, as I said, it took 200 years to build it, 13th, 14th century. But the cathedral is still used every day, so people kept working inside, modifying, changing, and so on. The floor is the number one because it is unique in the world. But this is the masterpiece. This is the other masterpiece. Well, there are two sculptors, father and son, Nicola and Giovanni Pisano. They lived in the 13th century. Nicola was the forerunner of the Renaissance. Giovanni became the greatest Italian Gothic sculptor. Both have been the greatest masters of all the art in Italy. So all those famous artists whom we normally meet, who are more famous than these two, Michelangelo, Bernini, Donatello, uh, Cimabue, the painter, and so on, all of them were influenced by Nicola and Giovanni Pisano, who worked in the 13th century, are the masterpieces of all the art in Europe in the 13th century. So you see that they're really very, very important. Several more of the most important artists in Italian history are also represented in the Siena Cathedral, including Bernini, who created several of these statues in a side chapel inside the cathedral. Bernini, the great master of the Baroque from Rome, and the dome is another very significant part of this cathedral. It is just a masterpiece. It looks like it's coffered, that is, with those square indentations, but it's actually all painted on. Only the stars are 3D relief. The rest is a painted illusion. There we have a statue carved by Michelangelo, the great Michelangelo, who always carved those huge things, sometimes also. He was supposed to carve 15 statues, I mean, and he never finished them. He never explained why, but we understand why, because after three or four months, he started the big David, and certainly he had more fun in carving the David instead of than, than carving these small statues. Then he painted the Sistine Chapel, and then he went on, and this and that. And when he was over 80 years old, that means after 60 years, uh, realizing most probably that he certainly would never fi find the time and the energy to finish these 15 statues, he wrote a nice letter to the Piccolomini family apologizing. He said, I'm sorry, I never finished them and I never sent you back the money. Michelangelo. And that was the end <laughs> of the story. See, that is why we have only one. We can recognize Michelangelo. The famous spiral, the famous contrapposto, you know, that he kept twisting his figures. The position of the arm is the same that we find in the David and so on. So there we see. Michelangelo's failure to deliver those other 14 statues resulted in a famous lawsuit that dogged him for most of the rest of his life. Another artistic treasure of the Siena Cathedral is this library painted by Pintoricchio in 1509 at the peak of the Renaissance. This is a remarkable collection of paintings. It was done for the Piccolomino family who produced Pope Pius II depicted in the series of wall frescoes. Pintoricchio is a painter that you might not be very familiar with. He worked mostly in Siena and this is his masterpiece. So you really have to come to the Siena Cathedral to see it. There are just a few paintings okay. by Pintoricchio in America. There's one at the Met in New York and one at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, but you'd have to search far and wide to find any more. Even in Italy and in Europe, it's very rare to find works by this Renaissance master. So you need to come to the Siena Cathedral and go into the Piccolomino Library to appreciate this colorful masterpiece, an illusion of painted architecture and realistic Renaissance people. It was done in fresco with such an excellent technique that it's never had to have been restored. Those were the original colors. 
And throughout the cathedral, there is just one work of art after another, surprise after surprise, starting with the floor and the striped columns and the spectacular dome and vaulted arches in this blend of a Romanesque and Gothic style with many Renaissance and Baroque artworks inside. What a creation. And then we learn it would have been an even bigger church. At a certain point, Siena had become so powerful and rich that the people of Siena started the largest church in the world. That was in the 14th century. St. Peter's in Rome was not as big as we know it. And anyhow, that was supposed to become the new facade seen inside. The whole square, including the museum, imagine that side empty. The whole square was supposed to become the nave. And what they had already built, what we have just seen, was supposed to become only the little transept of this huge church. But they never finished it because of the plague, the Black Death in 1348 and so on, two thirds of the population in Europe died. So after that, Siena had no people at all money left, like all the other cities in the world, actually. But anyhow, the Sinis were compelled to give up working on this side. But that was the idea. Now we go to the Campus Square. The Campus Square happens to be one of the most beautiful squares that we have around. Around means in the world. <laughs> this is one of the main streets, so you see that the atmosphere changes. Big palaces, big buildings, 15th century, 13th, 14th century, bold families. This is a Piccolomini again. Do we have any musician in the group? The, uh, this very old university in Siena started in 1240. The university in Siena is what, 770 years old or something like that. There is also then the University for Foreigners that is all year round. So there are many people who come here to study the Italian language. And then there is, only in July and August, the very famous Academy of Music. The level is very, very high. Students come from all over the world. There is a very strict selection. Only the best are accepted. They don't need to be rich. They must be very good musicians. Now, why is this square one of the most beautiful squares that we have? Well, certainly it is a surprise. After walking on these narrow, winding streets, we find this big space. And that is, a, that is a surprise also for us. Second, it was created in the 13th century. This has always been the city hall of Siena. And the people of the 13th century had never seen such a big square. Forget now the size of the squares in Rome or London and so on that were built later on. In the 13th century, People had never seen such a big square because governments were against big squares. Too dangerous in case of revolution. They weren't certainly so stupid to have a big space in front of the, uh, in front of the city. Also, they just avoided. You can notice that in Florence, the famous Piazza della Signoria in Florence is not very big for the importance of the square and so on. So you see something very new was this. It was decided that even the, the buildings had to be one close to the other in order to underline the space. The city hall has always been city hall for over 600 years. The courtyard of the city hall is a classic example of a Tuscan arcade. The giant bell tower soaring overhead. It's free and open to the public to come into this courtyard, so by all means, have a look. The Palazzo Publico. And inside there is a paid museum you could go visit if you wish to see the paintings, the famous ones, the allegory of good and bad government. The Campo is truly a remarkable public spot and it's surrounded by places to eat. This is a great time for a snack, get some ice cream or pizza. Eating Italian food is certainly one of the great pleasures of a trip to Italy and we'll be doing lots of that in our visit. You're watching an art tour of Europe with some students from Punahou School. We've just covered Siena. Now it's time to leave this charming little Tuscan town. We've had a couple of hours here with our local guide. And now we're moving along to the next city on our tour, which is Florence.